Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to the channel. In this, the third episode of Epic Emulation Updates, we're going to be taking a look at even more significant performance, rendering and graphical updates in all of your favourite emulators that I myself cover on the channel. The emulators we're going to be taking a look at include RPCS3, the PlayStation 3 emulator, CMU, the Wii U emulator, and Yuzu, an emulator for the Nintendo Switch platform. There are tons of games we need to take a look at, so let's get things quickly started by taking a look at Yuzu. In the past few days alone, we have seen several optimizations and improvements to this Nintendo Switch emulator. Many of them can already be seen in this title menu. However, to showcase the main improvement we've seen in the last few Yuzu Canary builds, we're going to actually need to start a brand new game. So everything is pretty much as it usually is. The game just starts with its introductory cut sequence, but instead of watching this, I'm just going to skip it so we can get forward into gameplay where you're going to see this brand new optimization and improvement. Now, previously in Super Mario Odyssey, on every single older Yuzu Canary version, every single time you got through that introductory cutscene and got into gameplay, you would be faced with an immediate corruption of your graphics due to the calling of the NVDEC video encoder. I'm happy to announce that in the latest Yuzu Canary version, at time of making this video at least, this NVDEC video encoding graphical corruption is now completely fixed in Yuzu. Now, not only have we seen this graphical corruption fixed, but we have also seen a fairly significant uptick in performance and shader compilation times on this Switch emulator. Previously, on my own machine containing an 8700K and a GTX 980 Ti, I and pretty much every other player in the community would suffer with absolutely horrendous performance and shader compilation stutter upon the very first time of loading into your levels. While the shader compilation hasn't been completely fixed, it is definitely, definitely 100 times better than it previously was. Instead of starting off gameplay at a laggy 4, 5 and 6 frames per second, it generally jumps straight up to the mid-20s, at least on my machine, as I said, with a higher-end CPU. Regardless of this fact, pretty much every single computer should be seeing better performance and better compile times using this latest Canary version. It must also be noted that due to AMD driver issues, AMD GPU users are still having performance issues with this emulator at this point in time, but the Vulkan API backend for this emulator is well in development and hopefully we'll see much more of that in the coming months. This Vulkan API backend should give a fairly significant performance increase, especially so to AMD users, users who generally struggle for performance in OpenGL emulation. Jumping back across the gameplay for one moment, you're going to see that when I call this NVDEC tutorial, I am not going to get any more graphical corruption in a very similar fashion to what you saw at the introduction of the game. While yes, Super Mario Odyssey has seen radical and drastic improvements in the past few weeks and months, there are still many issues. One of the most major ones at this point in time is the fact that when the action guide is called, the game will simply crash and will not be able to proceed any further and unfortunately, since when you're trying to travel from Cascade Kingdom to Sand Kingdom in gameplay, this app guide is going to be guaranteeingly called and it's just going to crash your game. Do not worry though, there is currently an applet in development for this emulator that is going to render all of these action guide manuals, so hopefully that is going to be merged into the latest Canary version sooner rather than later. Let's move on to our next title, yet another Nintendo Switch exclusive, ARMS. Thanks to all of the improvements and updates we've seen in the last two weeks or so, this is yet another 3D rendered title that can almost be considered fully playable. As you can see in gameplay, I am getting a steady locked 60 frames per second and the only general issue that this game is currently having is the fact that at times there is quite a large amount of shader compilation stutter. However, as we saw in Super Mario Odyssey, this shader compilation stutter is getting a lot better in this Switch emulator and hopefully once it improves even further, this game will be fully playable and you will not hopefully experience any shader compilation stutter at all. The next title we're going to be taking a look at is a very much so highly requested one on the channel. Let's take a quick look at Octopath Traveler. So while performance hasn't generally improved too much in this title in the past few weeks or months, we have seen several compatibility improvements in this game. 
As with the previous titles we've taken a look at, compile time seems to be very much so lowered and when we actually load into gameplay you are going to see that we now actually get somewhat rendered graphics. Well obviously it's not perfect and not ideal in any sense of the word, even the fact that this game is showing signs of life and rendering anything correctly at all is definitely heartening. Hopefully with even more hard work on the parts of all of the developers of this emulator we'll see even more progress in this game coming into the new year. Ok so let's move swiftly on once again and take a look at Simu, the Wii U emulator where FPS++, one of the most highly used and recommended graphics packs for the Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild has seen yet another enormous improvement. So in order to show you what has been improved in this brand new 2.1 version of FPS++ I'm going to first have to show you the bug that happened previously. Basically what would happen was any time you were in the air and you used your bow and arrow all of your stamina would immediately drain just like you can see happened to me right here. Just so you can get a proper insight into just how quickly your stamina would drain let's do it one more time. Once we've regained our stamina let's get to the height of our jump and as you can clearly see our stamina is draining way too fast. Thanks to Zalfanos, the original creator of FPS Plus, they have merged a brand new update to the FPS Plus Plus version on the main graphics pack repository that as you can very clearly see has completely fixed this stamina draining issue. Now not only this but they are also continuing to work on this graphics pack so hopefully in the next few days as with the past few we can see even more improvements and optimizations to this pack. If you're not aware in the past few days they have completely fixed any of the arrow drop issues and they have completely removed any judder from the animations that would happen when using FPS++. Let's move quickly along once again and take a look at our next emulator RPCS3. So as many of you guys have requested we're going to be taking another extended look at Red Dead Redemption and The Last of Us running on this PlayStation 3 emulator. As you can clearly see we're going to be firstly taking a look at Red Dead Redemption where we have seen not only a performance improvement as you can very clearly see we're no longer dropping down to around 14 and 15 frames per second instead we generally stay around the mid to high 20s and sometimes even locked to 30 frames per second. Now while yes performance is always going to be one of the main talking points in regards to emulation, one of the main issues that has plagued Red Dead Redemption's emulation on this PlayStation 3 emulator is the fact that it has very very poor stability. I am happy to report that in the latest versions of RPCS3 we have seen an enormous boost in stability for this game. While it's still not perfect and it generally is going to crash after about 20 or 25 minutes of gameplay, it is a damn sight better than crashing every 2 or 3 minutes like we previously were used to. In relation to performance in gameplay we have also seen a small uptick in performance, I would say that we have probably gained about 10-15% to in frame rates. Please do be aware though that as with several other titles on this PlayStation 3 emulator you are not going to have very good performance or anywhere near playable frame rates like you can see in my gameplay footage right now unless you are using an absolute monster of a CPU just like my 8700K. This is hopefully going to change very very soon though as there are some more optimizations on the way for this PlayStation emulator and generally what happens in the emulation cycle and development cycle of emulators themselves is that first they have to fix the crashing bugs and stability of a game and then afterwards they can concentrate on its optimization and performance. Let's move on to another highly requested game on the channel, let's take a look at The Last of Us. So in a very very similar circumstance to what we saw with Red Dead Redemption we have seen a slight performance uplift and also a very generous improvement to the stability of this game on this PS3 emulator. Now instead of just showing you one of the areas of the game that has very decent performance I'm going to show you one of the areas that probably has some of the worst performance in the actual game itself. The reason I want to show you this is because this segment right here is pretty much at the very start of the game and I want to give you as accurate a representation of both graphical fidelity and the performance you can expect in its best case scenario on this emulator 
using this game at this point in time. So while yes, we have seen a very significant stability improvement, performance improvement and small graphical improvements, we still have many, many graphical issues that basically make this game unplayable. There is however meant to be an update coming to the LLVM SPU recompiler. At time of releasing this video, this update may even be live in RPCS3. This update is supposed to give us even better stability again and it's also supposed to slightly improve some of the graphical issues. Once that update comes out and I have appropriate time to give it some testing, I will test this game and many others on this PS3 emulator once again and let you know exactly what has and hasn't improved. Let's move quickly on to our final title and topic of this video, let's take a look at Ratchet & Clank Tools of Destruction. So as we saw in Red Dead Redemption, Ratchet & Clank Tools of Destruction and many of the other future series games have seen both a performance and stability improvement. This improvement can be especially seen in the very first level of the game, which for anybody who's not aware of it, is a very, very demanding cityscape level. One of the best places to showcase this performance improvement is right here just before we jump up to the Skybridge area of the level. In previous versions of RPCS3, this area would have very, very poor performance of around 10 to 20 frames per second, whereas right here in gameplay you can very clearly see that while yes we do have some graphical corruption and graphical issues, we are having a much much better performance generally staying in the low to mid 40s. Being one of my very favourite titles on the PlayStation 3 itself, I really really hope that Tools of Destruction and indeed many of the other future series titles get even more performance optimizations in the future. As I said guys, when we get any substantial updates in any of these emulators, I will make sure to let you know as soon as I possibly can. As always guys, if you have any queries about any emulators or anything I cover on the channel at all, do not be afraid to join my discord, you will find a link for that down in the description. Down there you will also find the discord links and patreon links to all of these emulators I have shown in this video. If you want to help with the development of any of them, head on over there and please do pledge your support. So once again guys, cheers for checking out this video, remember to like it if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't, and as always, subscribe to the channel if you want to see all future videos from me.